What's good? It's your boy, Mixtape Moth, and today I'm going to hit y'all with a flashback review of MLP's Firing Squad. Let's get to it. MOP, which stands for Mash Out Posse, Not Mop and Shit, is a criminally slept on rap duo from Brownsville, Brooklyn. MOP consists of the members Lil Fame and Billy Dans. Now, most people know of MOP from their smash single, Annie Up, back in the year 2000. That was probably the closest to a club banger that MOP ever made. But MOP has been putting in work since their debut album, To The Death, which was released in 1994. Their single, How About Some Hardcore, was their most popular song from that album. To The Death was produced entirely by DR Period, a Brooklyn producer, so you had no DJ premiere at this time. And that's the thing with MOP, is that they are a associated with beats from DJ Premier, but they didn't start working with Premier until closer to the second album, Firing Squad, in 1996. Before I get into this album, I want to highlight MOP's significance in the rap game. The type of rugged hip-hop they made was very unique. Sure, you also had Onyx coming out of Queens, who many would argue were just as good as MOP, but MOP definitely deserves their flowers for being one of the early groups to really give us that raw, high energy and aggressive New York rap sound. But I wanted to do a review of this album, The Firing Squad, because it turned 24 years old this week. And I always associated this album with the early part of fall. Pretty much everything about MOP and, and this record just embodies hoodie season. We all know that 1996 saw some of the best hip-hop albums to ever come out, in my opinion. As a result, this MOP album may have gotten swept under the rug by some of the other big-name releases that dropped, like Jay-Z, Nas, Fuji's, Tupac, Ghostface, Outkast, UGK, I could keep going. And to be completely honest, this album, Firing Squad, is not as flawless or as consistent of a body of work as their Warriors album from 2000s, but it is a personal favorite for me nonetheless, and it is very underrated, so I wanted to review it. But with that being said, let me hit y'all with this track-by-track track breakdown. On the intro, you have what sounds like it could have been a beat from DJ Premier, but it actually wasn't. However, DJ Premier is scratching in some MOP vocals, so his presence is felt on this opener, but this was just an intro to set up the sonic tone for the project. What follows is actually another intro called Firing Squad Skit. It was designed to segue into the next record, Firing Squad, but it ended up feeling unnecessary, in my opinion. I know there are other projects that have had two intros back to back, but I never really saw the point in that. The first actual song is Firing Squad, produced by DJ Premier. Now this Primo beat is one of his slower and more minimalist productions at the time. The piano loop sounds like Primo, but it's more of a gentle, subtle, and laid back beat from him. But MOP and Teflon sure do rap aggressively over this nonetheless. So it's like that perfect blend of smooth yet rugged. Teflon, who is an affiliate of MOP, always had a very distinctive and grimy New York rapping voice and flow. I thought he delivered a strong verse here. I had always hoped that Teflon would have put out more music, but after his debut, we pretty much never heard from him again. If he did put out music, it went way under the radar, but Little Fame closes out this song with a fire verse. He states, Take it to the streets, watch brothers collapse. Perhaps we could bust raps or bust caps. This is ghetto hell we living in, and if it's beef, you tell me, and these villains, we will go to war like Israelians. Up next, we have a quintessential DJ Premier beat on the track New Jack City. This beat has got to be one of his top 10, in my opinion. The slight melancholy bell loop is just so dope. It just personifies the essence of that mid-90s East Coast sound. The chorus alone is memorable. Get a warfare, heavy metal warfare, prepare, get on your post and stay in clear. It definitely has street anthem written all over it. Billy Dan's and Lil Fame both come out swinging with forceful verses, while both says some equally 
hard shit I always like Billy Danzes the most. He said, hey, yo, what the fuck is the deal? Here comes a new generation of rap dudes with fake attitudes that refuse to play by the rules. It's a shame the way they be dissing the game. They fantasize, then go to the studio and tell lies. Uh, but this was a crisp banger for the year 1996. It was a song that was on all the mixtapes back then. Then we have Stick to Your Guns, which contains a murderous DJ Premier instrumental. It's a chilling string loop that is a perfect backdrop for MOP and G rap to just spaz over. And that is exactly what they do. They body bag this beat, especially Cool G Rap, who spits probably one of his top 10 best verses. His whole verse is dark and villainous sounding. I could literally read the whole verse to you. It was that thorough. Uh, but this track was so aggressive and angry sounding that I'm sure someone caught a body to this back in the day. Then we have the next snapping track, Anticipation, which I think people assumed was produced by DJ Premier because the beat kind of resembled his production style, but it was actually produced by Little Fame and Lazy Lays. Now, the KRS-One vocal scratches, on the other hand, were definitely from DJ Premier. But this was a funky and head-bobbing track that was featured on all the mixtapes as well. You had Billy, Dan's, and Little Fame doing an ill back and forth on different parts of the record. But overall, this was just a fun and upbeat track from the album. So the next song, Born to Kill, was produced by Jazz O. Stylistically, this beat is different from the previous ones. I mean, it's not DJ Premier, so I remember that alone being a little bit of a letdown for me back then. But in fairness, it's really not a bad beat. I actually liked the storytelling as both members were describing a murder scene pretty vividly. After this, we have what is my favorite song on the LP, without a doubt, Brownsville. This is another top 10 DJ Premier beat easily, although it's not one of his more well-known. The Frantic Keys and Harp sample is fantastic. You know how some of Primo's best production can be found on that group home album, Live and Proof? Well, this beat is on that level. Lil Fame states, Brownsville's the place where crews seem the lavish. Cops get knocked down, body counts only rises. Then he says, them dudes will slaughter ya for your goose not a cut. You got jewels, stash them son, cause this is a thousand brothers broke and we all got guns. So this was just an incredible MOP track from top to bottom. And it's one of DJ Premier's most slept on production. The following track, Salute, is actually produced by Primo. But aside from the drums, you might not be able to tell. Uh, it's a grainy and lo-fi beat for him but very rugged nonetheless. And MOP is attacking the track pretty ruthlessly with their unrelenting and aggressive flow. The sequel to this appears on their 1998 album, and it is more celebrated than the original, but I like both of them, to be honest. The second one just has more of a signature DJ Premier beat. I'll say that. Up next, we have World Famous, which is a next snapping and feel good MOP track. It's produced by Jazz O and contains the same Donny Hathaway and Roberta Flack sample that Scarface would later use for his classic single, My Block. Now, I understand that MOP used this beat first, but if I had to choose, I think the Scarface song is much better. While this MOP song is dope, it isn't as impactful of a record to me as the face one is. After that, we have the Primo produced Downtown Swingin' 96, which is another fun, bouncy, and braggadocious record. I love the stuttering drums and scratching. There is also an anthem-like feeling to the chorus. Lifestyles of a Ghetto Child is also produced by Jazzo. While I like the storytelling and the back and forth training of bars, I thought this instrumental was just okay. Uh, this was one of the records where I enjoyed it much more for the lyrics than the actual beat. The following record, Revolution, is basically a skit that lasts pretty long at over the five minute mark. Uh, it has a funky 70s black exploitation vibe. It is cool as a concept, but after about two minutes, it gets a little repetitive as the few words spoken are continuously looped. The track Ill Side of Town is likely to only be appreciated by really hardcore fans. I thought this record was cool, uh, but it's not one of those must-have songs 
from this album. Sure, the sample is solid, but when up against some of these DJ Premier beats, it doesn't stand a chance. There was something about this record that gave me some Naughty by Nature vibes. Nothing to Lose is one of the more contemplative and reflective joints from this album. It shows another side of MOP, one that is the exact opposite of the how about some hardcore MOP. The synthesizer beat kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but I actually didn't mind it personally. I think that Little Fame and Billy Dan's might have been inspired by Ray and Ghost's Heaven and Hell song. It just gives off that vibe to me in terms of the more introspective content and the somber tone to the instrumental and even with the female harmonizing in the background. Some people have been really critical of this track, but I actually thought it was solid. After this, we have the dedication skit, which has some words from DJ Premier about the death of Little Fame's mother. This transitions into what is one of MOP's most heartfelt songs, Dead and Gone. This one is a tear-jerking tribute to Fame's mom and all the fallen soldiers and dead homies. It's a smooth and gospel-inspired record that showcased MOP in a more mature and grown light. This album wraps up with the Born to Kill remix, which was also produced by Jazz O. The lyrics and beat are the same, but we have Jazz O and a female vocalist providing an eerie hook. I like this version much better than the original. I feel the remixed hook definitely made it pop. Like I said earlier, this album wasn't as well received or as well put together as their Warriors project from 2000, but it's a damn good album that slid under the radar in 1996. It's a must have for MOP fans and for those who love DJ Premier production. I think the beats for New Jack City and Brownsville are some of DJ Premier's best Produce beats, and they are also two of my favorite MOP songs. But check this one out if you haven't. This album, to me, just epitomizes that crunchy New York type of hip-hop in the mid-90s with that special Brooklyn flavor that only MOP could give you. Let me know what you thought about this four to four and a half mic album in the comment section below. It's your boy, Mixtape Moff. I'm signing out, but be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe. As always, it's peace and blessings. MOP, Firing Squad, 1996, Flashback Review, one.